So if you're searching for a good solution for emulation, you can combine this with Windows or Linux Batasera. I maybe have a solution for you, or in other words, the best solution when it comes to paying money and getting some good value for your money. So in the end, when you're looking at the mini PCs, take consideration that mini PCs, buying them new will always be more expensive than buying a used one. However, there is still sometimes a very good solution when it comes to buying something new from AliExpress. So there are all kinds of different chips that I've reviewed in the last couple of years. But the unfortunate part is, is that not every single chipset is great for overall emulation, particularly when you're looking at PlayStation 2. If you're buying a $99 mini PC on AliExpress, sometimes even cheaper in the sales, or the flash sales they call it, it's highly possible that you can still play everything all the way up from the Atari to the PlayStation 1 period. Sometimes you can even upscale the PlayStation 1. Yeah, it's absolutely nuts if you think about it. But the unfortunate thing is, is when you're looking at like some other things, like PlayStation 2, GameCube, Wii, those platforms cannot be run, or let's say the mini PCs with the Intel Celeron chipset. For example, the 3000 or the 4000 series most of the time. And that is a problem. But now we have something that is quite interesting that is able to run a couple of those systems and sometimes even upscale it if you want to do this. <laughs> But let's take a close look at the page itself. You can just actually see there are so many different solutions out there on AliExpress. And that is one thing you need to take in consideration before you're going to be deep diving into the N100 Intel chipset. There are all kinds of different versions out there. Here in Europe, we have different like stores that can deliver within like five or seven days. But also another thing, they try to lure you in. Looking at the, some of the pages, they are super cheap thinking, hey, this can be a very cool deal, but when you're clicking on it, they will showcase, an, let's say, an older model. So that is something you always need to be, let's say, very careful with, that you're not ordering the wrong different version. But the N100 is absolutely in all kinds of different form factors. Think about overall build quality, how many USB ports, and upgradability. But let's do a quick chit chat about a couple of versions that I've checked out. Okay, so let's take a close look at the factory direct collected store. So when it comes to these stores and all of these pages, this is a great example, 127 euro. And there's even a sale coming up there that will drop to 113. That is an absolutely great deal. But you can see the bundle is 8 gigabyte, 256 gigabyte European version. So first of all, the, you need to buy the version where you're actually living. So the European version will have a different plug, but also you can just click this doesn't show you over here the N100, and it does over here. So in other words, this thing will cost 140 and the sale 126. And that is the thing you need to look out for. That you click on the exactly model. We also with 8 gig, 256 gigabyte EU, it's highly possible you're getting an older version. They don't really state it in the text over here in the bundle, but it will in the title. So I'm giving you the N5095. So this is the confusing part. So this thing costs 140. It's still a pretty good deal, especially with the flash, but still you just need to double check everything before you're going to be clicking and accepting to buy something. Okay, don't forget that you can buy a mini PC sometimes without storage, without RAM. So the thing is, when you're buying it without RAM, it's always a hassle, you need to buy RAM in your local store. But if you can buy it without storage, but do with RAM, it's going to be more convenient if you want to put a Borosera drive in it. I personally went for the smallest form factor on AliExpress. Take consideration that this is not going to be a convenient thing in many ways. It does have two HDMI connections if you want to use this thing actually like a Windows emulation machine thing. But yeah, the compact size comes also with a very high price. And that's the downside to this. And if you're looking online, you can find, let's say, the N100 for way less money. And in the future, it's going to be even cheaper and cheaper. So this thing does come with every single connection, only with a limited USB port. So yep, I'm going to need in a USB hub, especially if you want to play in four player configuration with some N64 emulation and of course some Dreamcast emulation. But yeah, I ordered myself the wrong power supply, but doesn't matter. This is just a 12 volt USB-C, so nothing very fancy. So that's very good. The N100 is absolutely amazing because we can run PlayStation 4 on, let's say, 720p. I've been saying it to 1080p, but the overall performance was not the, let's say, it's not the experience you want to. You had some minor slowdowns here and there.
So when it comes to PlayStation Portable and God of War, getting the 60 FPS, we have set it to four times resolution. Maybe we can tweak it to five times, depending on what kind of game you're actually going to be playing. But so far, it's going to be an overall good experience. So that's absolutely great. So starting off with some GameCube and F-Zero GX, a more demanding game to emulate. And on 1080p resolution, you do see some starters going here and there. So let's get into the gameplay and let's see how it actually plays. If we still have too many starters, we can also put it back to 720p. Even just a single ring is in... But I'm kind of some disappointed when it comes to the Sega Dreamcast. We needed to put a 1280x960 resolution. And where I was I at least like expecting full HD. With full HD, Data Life didn't run that great and had a lot of issues. And that's quite unfortunate. With the low price, there also comes some sacrifice, and this is absolutely a great example. PlayStation 3 is unplayable on this N100 Intel chipset. But there are so many different ways to emulate games nowadays, particularly with mini PCs. What is also interesting, I already mentioned that we have used PCs, but also when it comes to new models, they will become more powerful, and the older ones are becoming more, let's say, affordable. So where the N100 is absolutely in very cool balance, I've made reviews regarding the AMD Ryzen versions like the 5, 6 and 7000. Conclusion is emulation will become way cheaper in the future and we're having more possibilities. JMK Tech is what we have seen on AliExpress, more of a cheaper model, compact, less upgradability, but that is not really necessary when it comes to Batasera and burning itself an emulation machine. But the overall performance of staying was absolutely amazing and I really enjoyed myself some playing some games on this. So let's do a chit chat over overall with a couple of games and how they do perform. So with some emulation let's start off with some Xbox classic and native resolution. And the overall performance was not like really great but we could actually boot up the game and just play it. PlayStation 2 emulation is at that point that we can finally play this on a very cheap mini PC with this particular chip inside. But okay, you don't need to be trying to be even, even like upscaling it, it will not work that great. But we had some great performance, of course depending a little bit of what kind of games you're actually playing. However, PlayStation 3 was not possible. PlayStation Portable is, we can mess around with the back end with different kind of, let's say, different drivers. Uh, DirectX 3D11 or Vulkan if you want to. But the thing is, three times resolution, let's load it up and let's see how the overall performance is. And also a quick test of the Wii game Sonic Colors with the native resolution. And yep, we do have an overall okay performance where it does dips down to sometimes even 24 FPS, but it stabilizes very quickly. Nevertheless, we do have an overall okay performance when it comes to Wii. And of course, depending what kind of a game you're in the end going to be playing. Where we did focus a lot on, let's say, the more high-end stuff, plays to Wii, Wii U. I just want to point out, if you just want to play some two-dimensional game, they run perfectly on a machine like this. A lot of cheap game boxes, where we don't pay a lot of money for, but we can only run all the way up to PlayStation 1 on native resolution. And with a machine like this, we can even upscale it to higher resolutions and have an amazing overall experience. I can tell you, PlayStation 1 looks pretty good. We're having emulation with internal resolution upscale to, let's say, 1080p or 4K. Regarding Batasera, if you want to use this to our ready to go kits, including a hard drive case and hard drive itself and the controller. So you can just plug it in, add your games and just go on your way. Of course, this is more convenient simply because with Windows, you need to have yourself all the emulators downloaded, edit your games and you need to have a separate launcher if you want to look at fancy. And when Botasera, it's more stable on Linux and you can just easily update the software itself. Kenhang Super Consoles also have their own hard drive and this particular hard drive 
just looks different same kind of a quality with a two terabyte platter disc in the inside and the controller most of the time they're using the top controller and that is more a semi playstation 4 controller wired you also have a wireless version which is quite nice to be honest okay but how are we going to get the software you can just download this for free botasera.org here we can find the software that we're going to need for installing and gather yourself like this mini pc to run all kinds of retro games so what you need to do is go into the download page and you can already see over here that we have all kinds of let's say hardware that is supported with botasera so this is not like some simple program that is only possible to use on a mini pc there are all kinds of different handhelds and devices or just general devices that can get the Batashira running. But the thing that we're going to need, we're not going to scroll through the whole list. In here, we're finding the desktop, laptop, and other devices. That is one of the ways you can go to. But another thing you can do is, depending on what kind of software we're needing, is that we're having underneath, we're having all kinds of different versions, even to the Anthem and the low power devices. And here we're having old PCs. You can even run Batashira on that too. If you're going to be needing to flash this on a certain kind of storage device, the program that I most of the time use is Balina Etcher. It's a very nice to use free download. You can just download it for free and getting yourself your Batasera installed and flashed on. No, I don't want to have your cookies. Reject all. And then, of course, use this on your Windows device or even on Mac OS. From this point, you can just launch the file they've downloaded. The image file and just burn it to your storage device depending on the model you're having but in the end it's going to be the same kind of BIOS functionality so if you're being in the BIOS most of them are pressing the F9 or the Dell button but before booting up Windows here we need to go to the security so the secure boot needs to be shut off and the reason why otherwise it's not possible to boot into Badasera another thing that you need to check out is the boot so here you can already see boot option 1 has been set to Windows boot manager what you need to do is set this actually to the Kin Hank or the but Badasera one you have made. What you can also do, if you don't want to use Windows, you can disable this. So we're actually only going to get ourselves the Kin Hank boot. So here we're going into the save, going to save changes and exit. And when you've done this, it will automatically boot into Badasera. I went for the M6S. It's a very compact but also a very expensive mini PC. But there are many different solutions I'm already showing you on AliExpress. They are way cheaper and look out for the flash shield because this thing can become like dirt cheap and it's going to be absolutely a bargain. If you're buying a bigger one, sometimes you can even put the hard drive in it so it is more convenient to have one externally. More USB ports is more convenient for four player setups. Thank you all for watching. Consider subscribing, hit the little bell and it would be great to see you in the next video.